Hey, 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 people. Happy Thursday. Facebook, you're awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so hey, I'm just coming at you today to tell you a little something, something. And I wanted to share this with you real quick. Um, this is not a card reading. This is just a little, little tidbit. Um, hold on one second, folks. I'm going to share this out as I usually do. Hey, Geraldine. Hey, Danelle. So I'm coming on here as, you know, someone who loves and adores, you know, her light worker business, right? Doing psychic mediumship, doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring for highly sensitive, intuitive, and empath women to step into their own power and their own gifts, as well as coaching programs. So I do all of these things. Hey, Deanna, hey, Anna. And I love doing this, right? I love doing this. And one of my things, one of my missions for 2020 is, is to help to activate the light workers that are ready to go, right? So I'm not here to force anything on anybody. I'm not here to convince or sell anyone on anything or force it. It's those who are ready to step into it. I want to help you to launch. I want to help you feel confident about it. I want to help you really, really step into your gifts and realize how fucking amazing you are, um, which you probably know on a soul level, but sometimes we get lost and we forget. We get jaded. We get... Um, kind of buried under or weighed down by limiting beliefs and by shitty things that people spoke over us when we were younger, be it our parents, our schools, our pastors, um, our friends, whatever, extended family, um, romantic partners, whatever the heck, you know, we get caught in that. Um, and we forget, we forget how amazing we are. And we get the call though, right? You probably notice that after a while, it doesn't go away and you get the call to step back into it at some point in your life. And if you don't, it's kind of like a quiet little nudge at first, a little tap, like a little love tap, a little love tap. And then it's a little harder of a shove, right? It's a little bitty push and it might look like synchronicities in your life that come up like emotional breakdowns. It might look like losing a job. It might look like you're moving or you're, you know, changing homes. It might look like you're not feeling so well. You're getting migraines. It might look like all sorts of different things. You might have a falling out with somebody. You might find a long-term relationship ends. Like these are the little things that happen in your life to say, there's a big lesson in here. We're having things fall apart because we want you to see something. We want you to go somewhere else and we want you to realize that this is not truly in alignment with you. It may have been in alignment with you before when this first started, but where you're going, your next level of consciousness, what you're being called to do, if you're not going to take action on it at some point, the universe is going to come in and it's going to do it for you. And then you're like, oh shit, everything's falling apart. So we have two choices. We can either get completely weighed down and go down the spiral and get even more upset, depressed, anxious, and oh my God, the world's against me. My life sucks. I don't know what to do. Um, I never have, I have all the bad luck. Everybody else else has it better than me. I'm never going to get out of this. All this stuff. It's too late for me. Um, I have no choices. I have no freedom. I'm, I'm the wrong kind of person. I don't have the right education. All the excuses come in. I don't have enough money. I don't have any time, like all these things. Right. And so we can go down that spiral and we can stay there for a pretty darn long time too. And then what happens when we go there is guess what? We end up attracting the same situation again. So it may not be exactly the same relationship. It may not be exactly the same job. It may not be exactly the same argument with a family member, but you'll start attracting situations that make you feel shitty again and again and again. You'll go, this doesn't feel right. I don't like this. I don't feel comfortable here. This sucks. Um, this doesn't feel like it's working for me, right? It doesn't feel good to my soul. I feel like I'm either living someone else's life or you sit there wondering and go, God, is this all there is to life? Like, is this all there is? This can't be it. This fucking can't be it. Or you, rem you can't remember the last time you honestly felt joyful and happy. You're like, and so you're, you're dreaming about your old self. You'll start talking about the old me used to do this. The old me was so happy. Like you've changed, like you've shed some skin or something, right? Um, or like 
remembering when you were a kid, like nostalgia about like kid, you know, how free you were and how like excited you were and enthusiastic about life. When the truth is that person's still there, it's still there. You're just choosing not to let her blossom or him or her blossom and come out and drive the bus. We're letting our sort of jaded, limiting belief weighed down, wearing the cement blocks on your feet of limiting belief, drive the bus, your ego, which turns into ego, okay, which is like a coping mechanism. It's a protective measure, a protective mechanism. Can I talk? Wait. <laughs> it's a protective mechanism that at one point in your life served you. Don't beat yourself up over this shit. Like, don't beat yourself up for having like toxic thought patterns or bad habits or any of this. Why? Because it served you at one point. It was the best thing that you knew how to do at that point in your life, at that consciousness. And you probably had no other options that you could see. For example, when we're kids and we experience trauma, right? We don't usually have someone to go to that we feel safe like getting upset with or like bawling our eyes out with or telling how afraid we are because usually our parents don't understand or they're unavailable or they're the ones that are perpetrating the trauma, okay? So we go into this shell and we say, we form all these beliefs about ourselves. We're not safe. We're not worthy. Why would somebody hurt me? Um, nobody loves me or cares about me. I'm not good enough. All these beliefs come in. The world is not safe. And we go into these coping patterns. They can be all sorts of things. And our little kid coping patterns turn into big people coping patterns that sometimes end up harmful and those kind of things. So this is all part of what we do. That's part of the process. Or we can choose to go the other way and we can say, what am I going to learn from this? Like, what am I going to learn from this shitty situation? And what am I taking lessons out of this breakup, out of losing this job, out of... Um, I don't know, kind of losing, maybe you're losing one of your possessions or maybe a friendship ended or something like that. Like, what am I gonna take from this? Um, because every, every situation in person has something to teach you as you do to them. So the universe just doesn't present you with things randomly. There's always something going on. So trusting that, like if you trust that and surrender to it, you're like, okay, what do I need to take from this? Yeah, that hurt. Yeah, that sucked. I'm going to cry. I'm going to scream. I'm going to punch pillows. I'm going to go to the gym and like do some Zumba or whatever you have to do. And then, you know, what do I need to take from this? And you can go into those places. When you're going to that place, you know, that's when you're getting in touch with your higher self. That's when you're getting in touch with your intuition. It leaves you open for possibilities. It leaves you open for divine downloads to come in. Where going in the downward spiral of I suck, this sucks, life sucks, people suck, I hate humans, or you know, the world is against me, I have no luck. There's no room for possibility there. You're not going to see the light between the trees over there. So what's going to happen is you're going to live in the dark. And what comes out in the, like what happens when you're living in the dark, it pretty much stays dark until you're willing to turn on the light. The, the good news is you're holding the light the whole time. You're sitting there holding the flashlight and you're like, shit. Um, so... When I ask the question, do you want to ride the merry-go-round or the roller coaster? Um, I just heard this on an audio that I was listening to. I'm training in this um, in a new healing modality, and I'll share that with you later when I get closer to being done with my training because I can't wait to do this for my clients. Um, so excited. But I heard this on an audio today. Like, do you want to ride the roller coaster or the merry-go-round? And I also, this also was like really synchronous. Um, wait. How do I want to say this? It was synchronicity or it was kind of coincidental, but not. We know there's no coincidence, right? It was just an interesting timing, divine timing, because in my Becoming Fearless as Fuck program, that's my coaching program that's happening right now, helping women become, go from like feeling chaotic or feeling confused to feeling really confident and like shedding all of their fears and doubts. This is my four week program that we're doing. We're in the middle of it right now, um, just about on week three. And one of my beautiful, beautiful members had just really, did, she did a live stream. She was so brave and courageous. I love seeing my girls like step out, right? She's like stepping out big time and sharing vulnerable share that she was struggling. We just went through some, the first week one and week two were reviewing the past and then releasing the past. And we did guided meditations. We did visualizations. We did some ceremonies involving fire and all sorts of fun things, right? So we did all of these things and she was like go, still going through the release exercises and she's like, I'm really struggling. Like looking at this, it's so fucking painful. Um, 
that I want, I wanted to stop doing this. At one point, I wanted to stop doing this work. I wanted to stop the release. I wanted to stop the remembering. I wanted to, st you know, I want to stop. And she was feeling like I was crying, like she was crying and crying. And she's like, I'm just finding myself having random breakdowns. And she's like, I thought it would be easy. And that was what she said that made me go, oh, I thought it would be easy. Um, and I went, ha ha, there we have it. There's what we need to discuss right there. Um, and this goes for everyone who's doing my fearless course and anyone who's going to join me in psychic as fuck boot camp coming up next month to nurture and grow your psychic gifts. Okay. And be confident about it. This is not pretty work. I want you to know that any of this, um, and I assured her, like I went live in the group and assured her like, this is totes normal, totally normal that you feel this way, that you're going through this up and down. Um, because this work to grow your consciousness, to up level, to get to closer to your higher self is not pretty. It's not pretty at all. And if you're going, like some people think, oh, I'm just going to say affirmations all the time and that's it. Or I'm just going to read cards all the time and that's it. That's all the fun stuff. You know, that's the fun stuff. I'm going to do my little pendulum and that's going to be it. Um, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to meditate and that's it. Surprise. No, like, you know, in my opinion, this is my opinion. Now people can have their own different opinions going through the release, the review, like shining the light on the darkness that we tend to sit in. Okay. Sometimes I call it breaking off the cement shoes of the limiting beliefs that, that are weighing us down, going through that, having the strength to crush them and break them or the strength to turn on that flashlight and light things up. That takes work. That is hard work. And if you don't do it, here's the thing. If you don't do it, um, you will not be able to connect to your psychic and intuitive gifts as strongly and as clearly as you could. And let me tell you that it's it's so much more freeing, it's so much more exciting, it's so much more powerful, like authentic power when you're in that place. So it's of the highest good. You think, oh my gosh, like I just had a breakdown in front of my friend, I had a breakdown in front of my spouse, or I just had to hide in the in the closet and I have my kids watch a movie so I could go cry. Like, I'm so embarrassed about that. In our culture, we're trained to think that emotions or strong emotions are scary. They're bad. They're embarrassing. They're humiliating. It's a sign of weakness. It's a sign of you don't have control over yourself. Or if you do get upset, oh shit, you're going to lose control. Like something's going to happen on the other side that's going to be bad. You're going to be led down this bad path or some monster is going to take you over and you're going to do some crazy shit. Now, that this is I'm not talking about anyone who is dealing with a mental illness where there could be risks of high emotions leading to certain things or certain patterns that are really harmful. Um, and if that's the case, then absolutely like get help from your medical team, like, you know, absolutely, absolutely. Or your therapist, like if you need to do that, if you feel like this is an emergency danger, you know, for yourself or for anybody else, do that. This is disclaimer. It's not about that. I'm talking about kind of like, um, situations where like, you know, this is like, um, where it's more in your control. It's just more of a pattern and a habit. It's not so much a legit illness. That's like some sort of a chemical imbalance or some sort of, you know, whatever it is, genetic type of thing. This is where this is, um, more talking about a habit and a pattern that was formed over time that is so deeply ingrained that now it's hard to get out of it, that the pattern is going to come to you and fight you on the way out. And if you weren't meant to have these emotions, they would not come. If you weren't meant to release all this, you wouldn't feel it. Okay, you wouldn't feel it. You'd keep it hidden, suppressed, repressed, whatever. The reason why I say this is good news. If you're having a random breakdown, if you're like going through releasing work and doing all this, and then you have a random breakdown while you're, um, I don't know, while you're exercising or while you're reading a book or while you're walking down the street, that's actually a good thing. You're not losing your mind. You're not losing your shit. You don't have to be scared. Okay. Like I said, our culture wants you to think that, but the truth is we're human. We're meant to have emotions and the emotions are our physical body trying to release something that's traumatic or stressful. Okay. It's like, huh? Like after you cry your eyes out, don't you feel like, huh? Like, Okay, like I actually feel a little better, oddly enough. Sometimes, okay, yes, we may not feel better. A lot of times, though, we do. Like it's a big release. It's like, it's almost like your inner child that has been sitting there frozen for decades because it's been in its traumatic space. It wasn't allowed. Your inner child wasn't allowed to express his or herself. 
not allowed. It wasn't safe or it wasn't encouraged. You were told to shut up. Don't cry. You know, that's sissy stuff or don't cry. I don't want to hear it. I can't deal with this. You know, buckle, like, um, buck up, like, you know, go through, like, just go through it, get over it, get over yourself. You're being selfish or you're just making a big deal out of it. Empaths, you're over dramatic, you're over analyzing it, you're just, you know, you're so sensitive, you're hypersensitive. All those things we were told, your child went eh, and it like went into its protective mode and squashed the feelings and they're sitting there. So by you like doing the release work and having random moments of like breakdown means your inner child is like, thank you. Thank you for seeing me. Nobody saw me. I needed help. Nobody saw me. Nobody cared. Nobody bothered to find out what I needed. And nobody was there to fucking hear me. Nobody acknowledged how I felt. Nobody gave me a hug and said it's going to be okay. Nobody said, don't worry. You're safe with me. I'm protecting you. Nothing's going to happen to you on my watch. Instead, your kid felt traumatized and went, was told to just calm down. Now, as adults, we may know... Our parents may not have meant that. They may have been going through some terrible shit themselves. And as little kids, we don't get that. We don't know what they're doing. We're not supposed to. And we might have a logical understanding of that later. Like my mom was a single mom going through working three jobs, you know, was exhausted all the time, stressed about money, all the things. So when I came to her with my teenager problems, she was like, go away. Like, I can't deal with this. You deal with it. You know, so I went, you know, so... Um, or felt really like criticized, like I was selfish for bothering her. Like, I work so hard. What is your fucking problem? You know, and it was like, whoa. So it took that form beliefs out of that. And the trauma sat um, in there. It can be something is, is something like that, or it can be a big trauma, like sexual abuse or assault or something like that. And I've been through that too. So you go, Shh. like you just, you don't feel comfortable sharing your feelings. You don't feel comfortable coming forward. That's certainly not encouraged in our culture. We're finally, hopefully, getting over that and turning that around. But in my day, that wasn't something you talked about. So everything sits there and is never seen. Your inner child is like fucking screaming to be seen. Be heard, be acknowledged, be said, you validated. Yes, you have every right to be angry. You had every right to be upset. You had every right to be heard. You had every right to be um, respected. And you had every right to feel what you feel right now. So when you're crying like this and you're letting it out and you're like, ah, I'm having a breakdown shit, I'm going crazy, I'm bipolar. No. Okay, you might, okay, like disclaimer again, if you're, you know, really having like that condition, like you're diagnosed, I'm not, this is not to like insult you, criticize you, slight you or say that minimize that. You know, conditions are conditions. Medical conditions are a big deal and they need to be diagnosed. I'm talking about sometimes how, we go there and we think we have these conditions, but actually it's our own conditioning. It's not like we have this medical thing. Sometimes, and, and sometimes I think maybe more often than not, but I can't really say that. I can't speak for the population. You know what I'm saying? Don't want to make assumptions because I want everybody to be well, okay? And find your, find your voice, find your strength, find your inner confidence. But you know, but your inner child is like, um, finally, finally someone's there for me. Finally, someone's letting me let this go. It's been sitting there for so long. Yes. So don't feel like you're doing something wrong or feel like when you're doing your spiritual awakening that it's supposed to be fucking easy. You're in for a surprise if you think that. I know sometimes some of my clients have thought they're doing something wrong because they're getting very emotional. I'm like, no way. That's exactly what is supposed to happen exactly what is supposed to happen. And you find out, you ask yourself, you ask your higher self or your inner child, what do you need right now? You are the one that's going to be there to nurture yourself. You're going to be the one, the safe haven that, that you didn't have when you were younger. So what do you need? Is it a hug right now? Is it to curl up in a blanket and Netflix and chill because you just need to relax? Is it sleep? Is it an ice cream? Is it going out to the park and swinging and screaming and laughing? Is it seeing a funny movie? Is it going out with a friend and cracking up? Whatever it is that you need, you know, find that out. Something obviously that nourishes you, not something that's toxic to you or harmful, but something that is, what does your little child need? Probably some sort of a hug or some sort of a like, I love you, some sort of a you're safe, some sort of a let's go out and just go play. Like, let's just go play. Let's be free. And what freedom, right? So it just made me think of this. 
If you're thinking about going on your own spiritual awakening journey, I get a lot of messages. I have them from every single day. I get messages asking about people who want to go on the spiritual journey. They want to awaken. They want to figure out what are my gifts and how do I use them? How do I do this? Some people want to do it for a business and do it for a career, like a passion, purpose driven career, but they hold back. They hold back because it's our, our patterns, those patterns, those coping mechanisms. They don't go away easy because why they don't want to face those feelings. And when you were little, that was appropriate. It was appropriate not to face the feelings because it was too much at that point in your life. It was too much and it was not safe. Now that you're an adult, it's not as appropriate anymore, right? Because now you are able to process and release and you know that there's no danger to you right now. That danger is gone. That's the past. Now you're here and you don't have that danger anymore. So it's just you're still let giving that situation power or that person power over you. Okay, so really you have to make that decision. What do you want to do? Like holding yourself back, what is that going to do for you, right? Do you want to have the freedom of being in touch with your intuition? Do you want to have the ability to do readings for yourself or other people? Do you want to be able to make decisions in your life and feel confident? Do you want to make choices or absolutely know with confidence what you want? You know what you want to do for a job. You know who you want to be with. You know how to attract your soulmate. You know how to stay healthy and vibrant. You know these things because you're in touch with your higher self, because you've done the spiritual work, because you've shed the skin of your old beliefs and those old stories and those old pain so that the divine downloads can make their way in. And it's amazing how it happens that I promise you, you will get the divine downloads. You will be clear. You'll get so much clarity on who you really are, especially if you're looking around at your life and going how did I get here <laughs> what is this I don't remember like wanting this when I was little like, this is not what I wanted or this doesn't feel right to me right now you know like or there's something else this is, feels pretty good and I'm grateful but there's other things that I really want that I feel like I'm called to do if you want to figure out what your calling is you get in touch with your higher self you let the divine come in and speak to you you get the downloads you get the intuitive hits and it's so freeing and empowering so you don't feel like you're being dragged along by this lifetime you don't feel like you're just being held back or you're under a bad luck sign you know that that's bullshit that's all bullshit you have the power to change your financial situation whenever you want and you're like yeah right Jen yes you do you have the power to change your relationship situation you have the power to attract your soulmate love or you have the power to deepen your relationship current or you have the ability to be single and loving it you have the ability to change your health situation or to attract a healthcare team that's really going to help you and serve you. Um, you have all the, your body has amazing healing abilities. Watch Dr. Joe Dispenza, watch the work that he's doing um, or Bruce Lipton or Joe Dispenza. Okay. Like you're not de defined by your genetics. You're not defined by your chronic illness. You're not defined by your past. You're not defined by your past life. You're not defined by any of this. You can transcend all of it if you're willing to do the work. Staying on the merry-go-round is not doing the work. It's safe. It can sometimes feel comfortable, even though it won't, because life will still try to bump you off and make you feel uncomfortable, but it's safe. You might feel like shit. You might be anxious and depressed, but you'll ride the merry-go-round. You'll keep going around and around. Don't take any risks. Not be willing to shine the light on the darkness. Not be willing to do the work to do the releasing and not be willing to step into your gifts and into your power, even though your soul's screaming at you to do fucking something. Nope, I can find all the excuses. Don't have the money, don't have the time, don't want to do it. My church not going to like me. My parents aren't going to like me. My friends are going to think I'm weird. My husband and kids are going to be freaked out. Find all the reasons come up, okay? Or you can choose to ride the roller coaster, which is to me a pretty accurate <laughs> description of real life. Real life is like a roller coaster. There's the ups and sometimes the up, the ascension is slow, but you go up and then it's like all of a sudden you think you're like at the top and you're like, whoa, and you're like, Phew! then you might go down for a little while and it might be fast and you might go around and around and you might go upside down and you might feel like you're gonna throw up, but then you feel like so exhilarated and excited and you might be laughing your ass off and having fun. Because when you were a kid, I guarantee you at one point in life, if you went to an amusement park and your parent asked you, do you want to go on the merry-go-round or the roller coaster? 
most of you at one point probably said the roller coaster, unless you were convinced otherwise. The merry-go-round is cool, don't get me wrong. Like we all love the little carousel, it's, that's good to chill out with. But I think most of us craved the excitement of the roller coaster because of the ups and downs, the highs and lows, the fast and the slow, the turns, the twists, and the upside down, didn't know it was coming, the thrills and the chills, right? You wanted that, you wanted that. And so now you have that choice in your life when you look at, am I going to go through the spiritual awakening shit or not? You know, um, are you going to get on the roller coaster? Are you willing to get back on the roller coaster? Yes or no? Because it is, that's what it is. But at the end of it, doesn't it feel good? And you're like, yeah, baby, let's go on again. <laughs> you're willing to wait in line for two hours to get on that thing. So be willing to ride the roller coaster. 